Okay, so welcome back. Uh, okay, so so this is my hydrocarbon containing how many? Let me see. Uh, let me move a little bit uh, behind uh, back. It has one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, eight carbon atoms. What you just have to do is to identify the longest carbon chain. Now, the longest carbon chain may not just be straight like this. Sometimes you can have a structure like this. Can you see like this? It's a bit bent. So this can be an illustration of something like this. You've got, uh, you've got this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can you see like that? Can you see this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But it is not. Uh, it's not linear. But you just have to identify what is the the longest, the longest carbon chain. So the longest carbon chain does not necessarily have to be has to be flat. Yeah. So you just have to be creative to to look at the longest carbon chain. Are you okay? Now, uh, uh -huh. Now, on the board I have uh, I have shown. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> like in this case, if you're going to have uh, a hydrocarbon containing one hydrogen atom, I mean one carbon atom, the name will be methane. <coughs> Excuse me. But if you're going to have a substance with one carbon atom, the name will be will be methyl. If it's going to have uh, two carbon atoms, the name will be ethane. If it's if it's a, a hydrocarbon, it means it's complete. If it has uh, if it's a substance, it will be ethyl. Propane for the uh, parent chain, propyl for the substituent. Butane. Can you see one? Butane. One, two, three, four. Butane. If it, oh, sorry. There is one hydrogen here missing. So that is butane for, for the parent chain. Butyl for the substituent. Yeah. Now, you know what I had here? I've just drawn a, a bond line structure, zigzag here. Yeah, let me see how many come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Just like nine. So, what can you see here? Uh, this is a branch from the from the main chain. Now, this branch has got one carbon atom, so I'm going to call it methyl. This one has got one, two carbon atoms, so this is an ethyl substituent. This one has got three carbon atoms, I'm going to call it a propyl. This one is four carbon atoms, one, two, three, four, it is a, it is a butyl. So remember, and I think, um, uh, I think it's proper, I, I now show this. So this is my bond line structures. But just remember in your mind, uh, just remember at the back of your mind, that when you see this structure, this is how it is. This point here, there is a carbon and three hydrogens, yeah? Even though it is not being shown. Here there is a carbon, with two hydrogens. Can you see that? This is a carbon with, with one hydrogen because one hydrogen has been used in, in forming a metal group. So this metal group, I'm going to show it as my CH3. Can you see that? Now this point here has got one, two, three carbon atoms. So uh, there is a carbon with, with a hydrogen to make four carbon atoms. One, two, three, isn't it? So, so my metal group is going to contain CH2 and then this carbon will contain CH3. Can you see that? Yeah. So this point has got one, two, three carbon atoms. So I'm going to put a hydrogen to make four carbon atoms. So this carbon uh, here has got two bonds. So I'm going to put a carbon with, with two hydrogens. Yeah. This one has got two bonds. So I'm going to put a carbon with two hydrogens. How about this last one? It is a carbon with three hydrogens, yeah? So for now, what I'm just going to do is that at the end, you know that is a carbon with three hydrogens, yeah? 
these are carbons with three hydrogens yeah and then now you know once you see a branch with three three uh three uh what do you call three bonds it means that there is a carbon with one hydrogen so this is a carbon with two hydrogens this is a carbon with two hydrogens can you see that is it clear yeah carbon with three hydrogens carbon with two hydrogens carbon with a single hydrogen carbon with three hydrogens carbon with one hydrogen carbon with two hydrogens carbon with three hydrogens all the way up to the end yeah can you see that yeah so to do a structure like this one is very complicated so that's why we are actually doing what drawing this bond line structure let me just show it again uh, okay this what i've shown you like this one but that is similar to to what i'm uh, i'm going to be showing again just to show it again yeah just remember this is that this is that so this is that metal group so there is that point then there is that carbon with the ca trees then it's coming down there then there is that carbon two three then i'm coming here again there is that carbon then there is that there then at this uh, point here there is a there is a ch2 there is a ch2 there is a ch3 can you see that yeah so i want you to to see once you see such a structure it is simplified to to such a structure yeah this is called a bond line structure yeah this is uh, something which you call Le lewis structure a lewis structure you need to show all the all the bonds uh, uh, and i think you look at um, uh, uh, the the presentation or the document which i have shown new introduction to new intro to, to organic chemistry it will show you all about those lewis structure and the rest so that you'll be able to uh, uh, to see what what it entails yeah so there's something i want to mention about about the about the metal group uh, i mean about the substituents especially the ones which contain three carbon atoms and and four carbon atoms uh -huh. so so let me look at this substituent here now this is a substituent with with one carbon atom yeah let me just try to uh okay it's a substituent it is as uh it is what it's a branch from the from the main chain so let me um uh, let me just try to to move it uh, ahead because there is a point i'm just trying to uh uh yeah to drive but uh i want it to be somewhere at the center because there is a point i will uh, i will emphasize later in the course yeah so in this case this is my this is my my substituent this substituent has got one carbon atom can you see how it is so if i'm to to add uh, okay let me just try to add another another what another carbon atom all right can you see here so this is substituent with with two carbon atoms so this is this is called an an ethyl substituent can you see how it is it is an ethyl substituent yeah so even if i'm going to be removing it from from the chain it has two carbon atoms and and uh, how many how many hydrogen atoms can we see here one two three four five because the the place where they're supposed to be the sixth one is where it is being joined to the to the parent chain so a substituent has got one hydrogen less yeah so like this is two carbon atoms and five hydrogen atoms uh, two carbon atoms and five hydrogen atoms is that okay yeah so so let me look at a substituent with with three carbon atoms so i'm going to add uh, another another carbon atom okay let me, sorry let me add uh, excuse me let me add another okay good can you see here so this is what i'm going to be calling what 
this is what I'm going to be calling a propyl substituent. Can you see here? Okay, let me let me put it like this to show, excuse me, to show the point where it is being joined. So, so this is my substituent with one, two, three carbon atoms. Yeah. So if I was to join to here, I mean to this uh, parent chain, can you see here? I've got I've got my all zigzag one two three four and then at couple number four I've got I've got a I've got a proper group one two three yeah all right now there's something uh it's going to be new information and this one is called uh, isomers that after when you have three carbon three carbon atoms and above uh structures can exist in in more than one in one or more than one form it's called structural isomers yeah structural what isomers what is this word isomers yeah yeah isomers yeah so so this is the point at which the at which the uh it's going to be joining the the parent chain this one has got one two three carbon atom so this is one representation yeah so can you see this substitute has got a long uh a long carbon chain yeah can you see how it is zigzag like this but i want to to show you that there is another form of of a proper group yeah it's, it will still have three carbon atoms but the structure will be will be different so let me rearrange this structure. Can you see? In this case, this is where the parent chain will be located. And then I've got one, two, three carbon atoms. So, so let me do something by 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 putting this uh, this uh, okay, let me remove from here, and then I uh, uh, and then I put this one here. Okay, let me remove here, and then I put here, and then I put it here. Alright. Now this is a structural isomer of the same uh, propyl group. Can you see here? Look at here. There is one carbon, carbon atom and then there is a, a, a carbon atom and a carbon atom here. Can you see here? In total I've got three carbon atoms but the structure is, is different. Can you see here? Yeah. So, so this is a, a structural isomer of the propyl group the previous one was the normal propyl group. This one is called, is given the name of isopropyl group. Okay, let me show you. Uh, perhaps for me to do this, I'll have to, to delete the board. So this is a propyl substituent, yeah. So so the, okay, let me show you what I had initially. This is what I had, and then I put, uh, uh huh, and then I put here. All right. Okay, this is what this is what I'm showing as as my propyl substituent. This is the point which I'm showing. The point which I'm holding with the hand is is where the this substituent is going to be joining to the to the parent chain. Yeah. As I mentioned, a substituent is just a branch of the main chain. The main chain is what you're calling like the tree. So in this case, the or the or the stem huh, is is a stem. So in this case, uh, the, the, the branches are now the, what you're calling the substituent. So, so this is what I'm, this is similar to, so if this is where the, the parent chain, so this is a one, two, three carbon atoms, yeah? 
or if I'm okay, let me, if I'm holding it like this, perhaps it's, it's going to make sense. So this is where the the parent chain is located. Uh, this carbon atom is that, this carbon is that, and this carbon atom is there. Can you see how it is? One, two, three. Yeah. What I'm saying is this: if this where the parent chain is located, I can also have another another illustration of that carbon atom. So the first one is equivalent to this what I had. This what I had as my parent chain, and then I had a CH2, I had a CH2, and then I had a CH3. Can you see that? Now in this second illustration, this what I had as my parent chain, then I have a carbon with a hydrogen, then there is a CH3, and then this is a CH3. Can you see that? So this is what I'm calling as my normal propyl, and this one I'm calling it a isopropyl. Isopropyl as one word, yeah? Isopropyl as one word. Can you see that? So, so let me try to, to show you again. This was the normal propyl. Let me try to rearrange it. What's going to happen is that the, the carbon which will be joined to the parent chain is going to be left with, with one carbon atom. Yeah. So I'm going to remove one of the hydrogen atoms and then I put I, I bring one of these methyl groups, yeah, I bring it on this other side, and then I put my methyl group here, all right, can you see, this is what I have now, so there is a methyl group on one side, and another methyl group on the other side, and then I've got the carbon which is joined to the, to the parent chain containing one, one, one hydrogen, can you see, so it's like a tree, yeah, I mean it's like a what, it's like a wire, yeah? Can you see? It looks like a, it looks like a Y or how do you call this structure? So, yeah. So this one is called an ISO. Please remember this word here. You are going to encounter the same word ISO when you'll be looking at at a substituent containing four uh, four, uh, four four carbon atoms. When you're seeing the word ISO, it means there is a what? There is a there is a carbon there is a carbon containing one uh, uh, one hydrogen and it is joined to what two methyl groups yeah okay so you are going to see that word iso again when you'll be dealing with with the butyl what I'm saying is that we are going to encounter something called an isobutyl group yeah but we'll see that structure later so this is a normal propyl group this one isopropyl group. So these are isomers of, of the propyl. This is called the normal propyl group or N-propyl, yeah? N-propyl for the normal propyl. And this one is called isopropyl as, as one word. Right? So, let us see if you are going to have four carbon atoms. Assuming that is the parent chain, you are going to have a CH2, CH2, CH2 and CH3. Yeah, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. So that is similar to one, two, three, four. Can you see one, two, three, four? So that's called a, a normal butyl group. Yeah. It's called a normal butyl group. It is the same as what I have there. Let us look at the other isomer. See, this is what I'm calling as my parent chain, and then you've got uh, uh, you've got a what? Uh, can you see here? So this is equivalent to this is what I'm calling as my chain, and then I've got a carbon with a CH3 here. Then there is a hydrogen, carbon with a hydrogen. There's a CH2 here. Then there is a CH3. Can you see a CH2, CH3, CH, CH3? Yeah. So this is called a secondary butyl. Yeah. This means secondary. Yeah. We're going to come to that one. Yeah. Yeah. And then there is the third. Uh, this the third uh, type of uh, of a butyl. 
Can you see here? It's got one, two, three, and four. So this is equivalent to uh, a CH2, there is a carbon, and then there is a CH3 here, then there is a CH3 here, then there is a carbon here. What can you see here? Yeah? That uh, towards the end, there is a carbon with a hydrogen, it has, it has attached to a metal group and it's a metal group. That is similar to what we had here. Yeah? There's the carbon at the end, it has two metal groups attached to a carbon with, with a single hydrogen. So I'm going to put the word ISO. <coughs> Excuse me. But this one has got one, two, three, four. So I'm going to call it isobutyl. I'm going to call it what? Iso, isobutyl. Okay? Then let's look at the last type of isomer from the from the four carbon atoms. Okay, so I think because of the board, I'm just going to to put this other side. So this is the structure. I'm going to put a carbon here, and then I put a metal group here. I put another metal group here, and then I put another metal group here. All right. All right. Can you see here? So, if I was to draw it in the bond line structure, this is equivalent to, to such a structure. Can you see here? There's a metal group, a metal group, a metal group here. So, this carbon atom, it has how many groups? Well, bonds? One, two, three, four. So, there is no hydrogen there. So, this one is called a tertiary butyl. Or it's, or it's just given the name of T. Butyl, yeah, it's called a T butyl substituent, yeah. So, for four, if we are going to have a substituent with four carbon atoms, then there are how many isomers? One, two, three, four. The first one is the normal butyl substituent, the second one is called the secondary butyl, the third one is called the isobutyl substituent. The fourth one is called the, the tertiary butyl substituent. It's called what? The tertiary butyl substituent. Let me see whether in the in the remaining meaning here, in the remaining minutes here, I can be able to show you how are uh, how these substituents look like. Let me see. Uh, okay, let me let me get back to the to the normal butyl. Uh, I can proceed. Okay, just wait a minute. Okay, um, put it here. Okay, so so this is where the parent chain will be located, where I'm holding my hand. Now my substitute has got one, two, three, four. So this is what is called the normal butyl chain is just a straight chain zigzag yeah zigzag yeah one two three four one two three four the one uh, uh, which is joined to the to the to the parent chain has got two hydrogen two hydrogen atoms by the way the one who just got two uh, the carbon okay i think it's good for me to introduce this terminology now so that you understand what those tertiary uh, secondary and the rest uh, mean the thing is, if you are going to have a carbon atom with two hydrogen atoms, it's going to be called a primary carbon atom. Yeah? It's going to be called what? Primary carbon atom. It means it's a carbon atom with two hydrogen atoms. If you are going to have a carbon atom with, uh, with one hydrogen atom, it's going to be called what? Uh, where it's going to be joined to the parent chain, it's going to be called a secondary. It's going to be called what? Secondary. If the, if that carbon atom has got the one which is joined to the to the parent chain does not have any hydrogen, it will be called tertiary. So there are two. So there are three words which I want you to remember: primary. <coughs> excuse me. Primary carbon atom. If there is uh, if it has two hydrogen atoms. Secondary if it has one hydrogen atom. And tertiary if it has no carbon atoms. Can you remember that? Primary, if it has two carbon atoms. 
Secondary, if it has one carbon atom, no, one hydrogen atom. Tertiary, if it has two, I mean, uh, no hydrogen atoms. So this is your, so this is your normal butyl substituent. Yeah. So let me show you the next uh, isomer. So if this is the chain, what I'm going to do is I'm going to to remove uh, to remove uh, what? I'm going to remove a, a hydrogen here, and then I want to put one of these uh, methyl groups there, so that the one joined to the to the parent chain has got what? Has got one uh, one carbon atom. I mean, I've got one hydrogen atoms. Can you see this? This is another isomer. Yeah, yeah. So the the one joined to the to the parent chain, which is which is this one, has got one hydrogen atom. So that that carbon has got a methyl group and this one has got a has got another carbon and another carbon here so the total number of carbon atoms is one two three four can you see here or if i start from here one two three four four carbon atoms but the structure is is different so this is called a secondary butyl can you can you see how it looks like yeah if i may move slightly behind where the carbon is joined to the to the parent chain has got one hydrogen atom so this is a secondary carbon atom so this is called a secondary butyl secondary butyl yeah secondary butyl so what i want to do is this i want to maintain uh, i want to show the next the next isomer what i want to do is this i want to to change the structure by by putting uh uh, uh what I want to put my hydrogen here back and then um, uh, as you remember the carbon at the end if it, if it has one 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 hydrogen and then it is joined to to two methyl groups like like this one okay let me put let me put it there I'm, I'm just showing you the other the other isomer yeah? okay can you see here Look at the one at the end, yeah? The carbon at the end has got a methyl group and it's got a methyl group, yeah? So, so this is called an iso, iso group, yeah? There is, there, is a, there is a carbon there, it has a methyl group and it has a methyl group. So this is what I'm calling here. There is this, uh, there is this carbon with a hydrogen here and it is due to a methyl group and another methyl group. You people, you are very privileged the way the other students in the other years have not been able to see these models very close. Imagine you've been sitting in a class, you're sitting at the back of the lecture theater and you are expected to see these details, yeah? Yeah, so this form of teaching with a video is, is very privileged, yeah? And, and, if, uh, and I think um, uh, going forward, I think um, uh, I'll be recording videos, <coughs> excuse me, so that um, uh, whether there be notes or, or other things on the computer or others, it will be very easy to show uh, 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 in, a, in a close, I mean in a, what do you call it, uh, in, a, in a magnified form, yeah, the way it's not going to be possible in a, in a lecture theater. So, so, so can you see here? There is this, uh, I want to see whether you can see here. There's this carbon with the hydrogen, and then it's joined to a methyl group, a carbon with three hydrogens, and another carbon with three hydrogens. So there is a methyl group here, there's a methyl group here. Yeah? Can you see? A methyl group is like this. If I may remove it, yeah? This is a methyl group, a carbon with, with three hydrogens. This is a methyl group, yeah? This is a, a methyl group. So, so I've attached it back, and then the other, the other methyl group, yeah? A carbon with three hydrogens that's a methyl group yeah so this is my carbon with uh, with the two methyl groups yeah there is a methyl group here there's a methyl group here so there is a carbon with the methyl group and because the, this the this like the where the branching is uh, is uh, is this one the uh, it's like uh, once you reach there there is just like a branch so so that 
carbon uh, which has got a, a single carbon with a, with two methyl group it brings the word iso so so in this case this is called an iso but because it has how many carbon atoms one two three four it will be called an iso but but a butyl group i want you to distinguish between a secondary butyl and a and an iso butyl then the last substituent where the carbon is joined to the parent chain should not have should not have any any carbon atom yeah so i'm going to remove this this hydrogen and then i i take one of the one of the methyl groups i put it there and then i take uh okay let me see this is what i had so i'm going to remove that uh i'm going to remove that that hydrogen and then uh, i mean that metal group and then i put it here and then i put this group here and then i put this group here this is another isomer it's just like rearrangement here what can you see here where i'm holding with my hand is where the the parent chain will be located so i've got a carbon atom with a metal group on one side another metal group and another metal group can you see it's a bit bulkier yeah? it's called a tertiary butyl a tertiary butyl the carbon which is joined to the to the parent chain does not have any any hydrogen atom can you see like the red ball at the center there's a metal group a metal group and a metal group but there is no no carbon atom so this is what i'm calling as my tertiary butyl yeah okay all right so now we are going to be focusing on on this bond line structures going forward uh, with the illustrations this is just to show you the the substitute we've dealt with the metal substituent it has one carbon atom ethyl substituent two carbon atoms ethyl substituent no propyl substituent three carbon atoms butyl substituent four carbon atoms yeah all right so so we're going to be looking uh, in the next video we'll look at uh how to name the the hydrocarbon when it contains the the substituent it's a bit technical but you love it and you are going to uh, i believe to to enjoy i mean to understand the course very well yeah all right so we'll stop there and then we'll uh, we'll proceed shortly after some time thank you